Sometimes when you have two actors on screen, they don't always have their best performance in the same take. Or maybe they didn't even exist in the same take. So today, I'm going to show you how to combine two shaky handheld shots that don't even use a green screen by using an invisible split screen trick using Fusion and DaVinci Resolve. Now, the goal of this whole split composite technique, it's not to highlight some fancy picture and picture collage effect. So if that's what you're looking for, that's gonna be another tutorial. What I'm gonna show you today is the invisible art of masking and then combining actors' best performances into one single hero shot to help tell the best story. In fact, not only does it let you pick the best performances for each actor or a specific actor's body part, but you already know editing, it's all about timing and pacing, and a split composite gives you the freedom to change reaction and interaction times for every pixel on screen. Compress and expand time by just a few frames, that's gonna make all the difference if your audience laughs or cries. And there probably isn't a popular show or movie out there that doesn't use this editing trick. So let's dive into how it works, specifically on the Fusion page, of DaVinci Resolve. So we're gonna take your favorite takes and stack them up on top of each other. We got left plane on V1, right plane on V2, and we're doing this on the edit page because it's easy to adjust the timing. So I've got some marks here to kind of get me a little head start, but we can take a listen to make sure they're working like audio wise. Performance in the same take. Or maybe they didn't. Which is working, but we also wanna kind of check visually. Hey, are these working? You could hit D to enable and disable the different plates, but maybe a better way is to actually use the crop tool that's over here. You could choose that and then you can click and drag to wipe that left side off of the screen. And then you can go full screen with P on the keyboard, spacebar to play. Performance in the same take. Or maybe they didn't even exist in the same take. So I think that's probably gonna work. I'm gonna hit escape and we are pretty much ready timing wise to get this sent over as a fusion clip into fusion. But we don't need the crop. So we're getting rid of the crop by going back up to inspector and reset that right there. And the other thing that we need to do is we need to trim the clip so that we get rid of all this excess left side and right side that we don't need because it just makes it a lot easier if you're not taking extra frames in a fusion that you don't need. So we're going here first, hitting Command A to select all the clips, Command B, and then delete. Now, another way you can do that is if you go to the end of the clip using Fusion and DaVinci Resolve. At this point, if I wanted to delete everything after here, as long as your auto track selectors are turned on, I've got a whole tutorial on this you should check out. You hit Command B, it's gonna slice everything below it. And then the shortcut to select all the clips afterwards is an option Y. That selects them all, delete. That's just another way to do it. There's a hundred ways. Now, before we create this as a fusion clip, we wanna make sure that our timeline resolution is the same as our clips resolution because once we create a fusion clip, it gets locked into that. So if I select my clip, this is gonna let me be able to find out what my actual clip resolution is by going up here to the inspector. If that's not open, click right there, and then file. You can see the resolution is 4096 by 2160. So let's make sure that our timeline is also that. So to find our timeline resolution, you can come over here, and if you don't have stack timelines turned on, you click this button right here, and then this right here is basically gonna give you tabs, which is what they call stack timelines. But if you right click on this, you have the option to say find timeline in media pool and that takes you right to that timeline and you, in here you can say timeline settings and see what the timeline resolution is. So sometimes it's nice to actually work at a lower resolution instead of using the project settings, you could lower this and you get better playback. But when you create a fusion clip, you want to make sure this is the full resolution of your source clips um, because you're pretty much locked in at that point. So that's all set up. We select them both, we right click, and we say new fusion clip. It's just like a compound clip, but it's special to just work in fusion and it gives you access to both of those layers. So we have a fusion clip, it mashed them all down. Let's get into fusion and I'm going to show you how this all works. Now, if you're lucky enough to have both your shots stabilized by being on a tripod and totally locked off already, all you need to do is grab a polygon tool from there. You can hold command on your scroll wheel and zoom out and then just draw your mask by clicking and drawing around it. Um, you can close it up by either clicking right there or hitting shift O, closes it up. And then you just drag from the output of the polygon into the blue mask input of merge and you'd be done, right? But if you're an editor like me, you rarely get footage that's totally locked off to tripods. There's usually some movement to it, probably to both takes. We're trying to make the best edit that we can on the edit page. That's the whole point of this. We're not trying to show any effects. 
Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be stabilizing them both, putting them together, and using a simple four-step process that I'm going to show you that's so easy that if I can do this in the Fusion page, I know you can too. First, we're going to stabilize each shot to make them rock solid. I'm going to show you how to use the point tracker for that because it's the most versatile. And we're going to use a match move setting called BG only. But the point is to make it as stable as if it was shot with a tripod. Number two, we're going to mask and merge the stabilized plate together. And I'm going to use a polygon and a different supply mode to help line it up. And then third, we're going to destabilize the stabilized composite by copying and pasting one of the tracker tools and setting the merge mode to foreground only. That's going to really sell it. And then four, finally, we're going to use a transform tool to scale up and reposition our shot to hide our edges. If you're new to Fusion, I'm going to give you a couple quick tips. The first one is we have two viewers loaded up here. We've got a left and a right, a one and a two, which is indicated by this down here. You can change those with one and two on the keyboard if you select it first. <laughs> but I'm just going to use number two because it'll speed things up. So if you hit this button here, it shows just that one viewer. The other thing is when you create a Fusion clip, it kind of puts things in a weird order. So yellow means background and green means foreground. Background is underneath, foreground's on top. So think of foreground as layer two. We're gonna move this around. So I'm always gonna read left to right. So I'm gonna move my background, which is yellow, over there. And you can see that doesn't actually affect how things are put together. It's just visually, it's easier for me to understand. But if you right click, you can actually say, force all source tile pictures or force source tile pictures which now we get a little thumbnail that's going on. And if those don't show immediately, just hit play. And you kind of get a visual representation that that's actual footage that we're dealing with there. That's not like an effect, like the tracker effect, which is what we're going to play next. OK, to get the tracker effect, we're going to be using a tracker that's applied to both of these. It's going to come right after it. So to pull it up, I'm going to hit Shift Spacebar, which gives us this select tool list. And then to find it, just start typing tracker, T-R-A-C. And you can see it's right there. Hit Return and that throws it in the flow. If you forget that it shifts spacebar, that's also up here under effects. You can find it that way. It's super slow. Just learn shift spacebar. It's great. <laughs> Anyways, trackers, they have to have an image input. So we're going from media in into the background of the tracker. And the tracker is here, but it's actually not loaded into frame yet. The way you do that is you could either hit two on the keyboard, or you could just, what I like to do is just click and drag up there. And now we're looking at the tracker through this media one in uh, node. So we're going to be tracking three points. And the reason we're doing three points is we're trying to figure out what the camera movement is for the position, rotation, and scale. And you need three points for it to kind of figure that out. Now I'm going to warn you, before you go and start grabbing this tracker that is automatically applied by clicking this upper left arrow here and then clicking and dragging it and placing it somewhere, you want to think of these four criteria and watch your footage down before you go start tracking willy-nilly. You want to make sure that it's high contrast, that it's in focus and sharp, that it's on the same plane, and also just that there's no obstructions, that things don't go in front of it. Once you've watched your footage through and scrubbed through to have an idea of what might make a good tracking marker, tracking pattern, then you can get started. Oh, and of course, you want to make sure that your tracking points are locked down in the scene. It shouldn't be a moving object. We're not tracking something that's moving. We want to track static objects. That's what's going to give us the camera position. I'm going to grab this point right here and zoom in with Command or Control on a PC. And then my mouse wheel lets me get in real close. And I click and hold on that spot, and it kind of zooms in for me so I can position it. And that little attach point, that, that cross arrow, is right at the most contrasty part of the image. And I'm going to release my mouse there. And we can see, if I expand this part of the inspector, you can kind of see a zoomed in view over here of what it's looking at. Now, I'm going to make this even tighter because I want that to be a real nice tiny area. And then this outer box that you're looking at here is called the search area. And what that does is if the camera moves a lot from one frame to the next, it's going to kind of use that area to try to find what the pattern looked like when I first assigned it. Now, if we take a look here, it kind of has some degree of contrast, but it, it could be better. And the way it can be better is you can actually do point trackers based off the color image channel, R, G, and B. And the way I can quickly see what the image channels look like, the color channels look like up here, is this. We got R, G, B. So instead of clicking this, which you could do, is you can actually use the keyboard. So we're on R right now for red, hit G for green, which has a lot of contrast, B for blue, and then C for color. Now once you get into alpha channels, A does alpha. So if it goes white, that was alpha. C takes you back to color. That's a great lesson in and of itself. But we saw R, G, B. I think G 
has the green channel, has the most contrast. So if we want to track just on green, you come over here. We've got tracker one selected, which is what the name of that tracker is. We're going to track on green only. So we selected that. And then to track this, it's really simple. We're on our first frame. We come over here and we say track forward from current time. And we just sit back and relax and watch this thing move. So as long as this stays locked onto that point right there, we're going to get a great track. All right, the track is complete. It looks like we have a pretty good result. And if we want to see how well it did, you see if you go up into here and then we go to operation, change operation to match move, which is what we're going to be doing later, choose background only. We want to check to see, does our cursor move? And I actually mean the background moving around the cursor as we play through. It looks like it's pretty steady. Now, we're going to improve this by actually putting two more down. And I'm going to go through this process really quick and fast forward so you don't have to watch it all. But I'm going to stop it right here. We're going to go back to Operation None, which still holds all that tracking data. I'm going to come over here and hit Command F or Control F to zoom to fit. And I want to show you something that's important. This tracker list, basically, if this is in check mark mode and we add another tracker, it's going to retract that tracker. But the best way to really add three tracking points is not to do them all at once. You want to do them one at a time. So we're going to turn this off and then turn it back on, which basically uses is able to use the data later on for stabilization. But it doesn't redraw it when we add a new tracker. I'm going to change the name here to tail light. That's just for me to keep it straight. And we're going to add another tracker. And we're going to come back to the beginning. I'm going to use a part of this milk crate over here that looks to have high contrast. I'm going to command zoom to go in and try to get my pattern on a real nice high contrast area. Why don't we use that top right there, that top of that little diamond. Close this in. And I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to watch this whole process. But it's basically the same idea. Great. Render is complete. We can mark that off the list. We'll say that one is called milk. And we will suspend that. And let's add one more tracker. There's an area down here on the license plate that has a nice little dot. That is going to be a nice little tracking marker that we'll use. So I'll hit add. And that one gets added way down there. And let's just position that over on that part of the truck. And we're at the last frame, so which is fine. In this case, you can just hit track backwards from this point. All right. So now what we have, if I come back here and want to see all the color again, I hit C, Command F to see everything. And we like that track as well. Now let's just label this for our own sake in case we need to refer to that later. And then you're going to go to Operation, Match Move, and then we're going to choose BG Only, okay? BG Only basically tells it, hey, we're going to be stabilizing the shot. So if I zoom out of the shot here with Command Spacebar, you can see this plane right here is stabilized and everything else is moving around it around the edges. So this is what's going to let us merge the two together. So I need to do the exact same thing on the foreground shot. So I'm going to do that in fast forward motion so you don't have to watch the whole process. And then we'll get on to the next step. And we're going to check our channels, R, G, B. R is the best channel, so we're choosing R. To pan around, I'm pushing in on the mouse wheel and sort of drag as I'm going. And it's done. Now we put our three trackers on this second shot here, this foreground shot, but we haven't locked it off yet. Remember what you need to do is go to operation. Instead of it being none, you choose match move and then background only. And what that will do is it'll lock it off. So if I do command scroll wheel there, we can actually take a look at the shot not moving anymore. It's almost as if it was on a tripod. How cool is that? All right, so now that if you have both of these shots stabilized, masking and merging these two stable locked off shots is actually not that hard. We're going to start by adding a polygon tool, which you can grab from over here. It's this guy right here. Click and drag to pull that on down there. And just so you know, polygons by themselves are animated by default. So I like to usually remove that right off the bat by right clicking over here and saying remove polygon polyline. So that way if I move points between different sections of the timeline, it's not animating without me knowing that. And then we need to decide where we're going to draw the line that kind of splits the screen up, right? Even if it's an over the shoulder, you could do roto across someone's edge and still use that. They don't have to like be totally separate. I want to actually be looking at my left side screen here to draw my mask and not the unstabilized version, but the stabilized version. So that's actually tracker one. So that one's not moving. And so that's in the view and I've got polygon selected, which means I can draw on it. And I'm going to look for sort of 
hard lines that will mask the difference in you know perspective and parallax of these two shots so for this instance i'm going to actually use the edge line on this on my truck and uh you know kind of follow on down there now to move around and pan i'm pushing in on the mouse and then command scroll wheel is kind of what's getting me around with it so my arm comes out there so you got to be careful that you don't start masking in on the arm and then um, i don't know we'll come on down here and then finally to close this up you could hit shift o or click right there and it closes up the polygon so if we just wanted to look at the mask alone you could load that up into there and so basically white reveals black conceals that's all we did we made a white area and a black area and what we want to do is we want to reveal the foreground and the foreground is remember it's this green input into merge we're using the merge node to apply the mask so we go output of the polygon into merge one and as soon as you do that we don't see anything yet because we're still looking at only the polygon but if we load the merge up now by clicking and dragging now we can actually see that what area that was white that we drew the circle around up in here however you can see we don't have the best result yet now neither of them are moving so we should be able to line them up and that was the point of the stabilization this is going to let us line them up and then we can worry about adding motion back later so to line them up i'm going to the first frame i'm going to start by just using the center position here on merge make sure you are selected the merge which is going to move that foreground layer not the background layer and you can use center, size, all that stuff over here. Or they have on-screen controls right here, which are also pretty handy. So I can zoom in a little bit and kind of get it somewhat close to start, right? So I'm kind of using those edges on the back of the tailgate and finding areas that look like they're kind of similar. But here's the kicker and the trick that a lot of people don't know about that you now know. Under apply mode, instead of normal mode, scroll down. There's one called difference. And this shows you the difference between the background and the foreground. And if it's black, there's no difference. So this is perfect for aligning images. You can move your center point. Now, if you grab this by default, it moves it a lot. If you hold down command, it kind of gears it down. So it slows that precision down. So you can try to get it to where it is fairly you know, black, which is means there's no difference, which means they're pretty much well aligned. We've changed the apply mode back now to normal. And then if you hit play, it's starting to look like, hey, both of those were at the same shot at the same time. One more thing to know about polygons, and I don't want to go into a super big polygon tutorial, is that you can soften the edge of the polygon to sort of blend it a little bit better. One way you can do that is by choosing the polygon here. And I want to show you this in, in a two viewer mode so you can understand better. So if you click the two viewer here, Command F to zoom to fit, Command F to zoom to fit, and why don't we say on the left side we'll load the polygon. So on the polygon, you can say soft edge, which basically blurs that whole edge out. But there's actually a lot more precision to the polygon tool that you might not know about. If I double click to reset that, is you can turn this into what's called a double poly, which is this button right here. Choose double poly here. And now we've turned these into like little diamonds. These little diamonds that are on here. And if you select one of those, basically from this point to this point, this edge can have its own unique different softness value, right? So if I select both of those and I hit tab is how you kind of go between them all. Okay, you can actually pull that out and create a softness line that's unique to just those. So you can see how that works on over there if you're just looking at the, uh, the polygon tool, just basically the alpha channel. So you can really, really get an idea here of how precise you can be with masking in the Fusion page. Oh, you can see right here we have a little bit of an issue. So we just want to fix that by pulling up there so that that arm is not getting cut off. And there we go. We're on to step three right now, and this is gonna go really fast. You're in the home stretch. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna be reapplying the stabilization trackers as destabilization trackers to get that movement back from the original camera shots. So we can choose either one that we want. We've got tracker one, tracker two. Tracker one over here is basically the movement from the left side shot. We can take a look at that if I click this button right here and just sort of play. And you can see up here in the left window, yeah, we definitely got some movement there. Let's apply that to the whole plate 
you know, as a composite. And here's how you do that. Super simple. You select the tracker one, we do Command C, uh, Control C on a Windows machine, and then we paste it right after the merge tool. Um, the best way to do this, honestly, is if you just select the tool, when you press Command V, it's gonna paste it right after it in the flow. So always select the one you want before, it's gonna paste it afterwards. Otherwise, you're gonna like hook it up with holding shift or connecting things. This is just an easier way to do it. So now if you take a look, we can flick this up into our right viewer and let's actually just close this down to get a little better performance. We, we do have motion back into the shot, but it's actually, it's not what we need. So anytime you add this information back into the shot, you actually wanna be applying it under operation mode and we're gonna change one thing, only one thing from the original. Instead of being background only, which is for stabilization, we wanna change this to foreground only, okay? So this is gonna match those pixels per pixels for the left plate. Now you'll see right off the bat, we have an issue. This is red right here, right? What, what are you doing, Chadwick? This is, this is a problem. Well, it's because we've chosen foreground only and we have nothing going into the green foreground. It's easy to fix. All you need to do is take another output out of merge that's one cool thing about Fusion is you can use multiple outputs per tool. You just grab then click and hold that until you put that in the foreground there. And all of a sudden, we have applied the exact camera movement from our original left plate to the entire composite. So they're moving together in unison. So you can see the whole left side or right side of the truck is moving in tandem with the left side. And I can prove that real quick if I open up the dual viewer again. And we go to one of these shaky sections, I know around 50 frames, there was some, some jostling and you can see as they update, it's pixel per pixel, the, the same from both of them. Now you can might see right here, we do have an issue and this is gonna be step four that we need to solve. A lot of ways to do this, you could letterbox it, but we're just gonna scale it up. Take a look at this edge right here. So step four is we're gonna use a transform tool to blow the image up and take care of any sort of extra little pixel problems. Down here, we've got an issue with my polygon was not perp was not drawn, you know, as good as it could have. Uh, I, I could fix this, but it's a tutorial. So let's just cheat it by adding a transform tool right after. So I'm selecting tracker, hitting shift space or control space on a Windows machine. XF is the shortcut or just start typing transform, hit return. That puts it right after in the flow. And then to see that you flick it up there into the window and it hasn't changed yet because we haven't done anything to it yet. I'm gonna hit Command F and then scroll wheel with my mouse and Command or Control to do that. And then we can start to blow this thing up. So on-screen controls, that little green box, and we can sort of move with these on-screen controls to eliminate those borders, those edges that we were seeing right there. So I think we got them taken care of. If I zoom in down there, we're pretty good. Zoom in up there. I think that's pretty solid. Now we can just take a look and play back. And if we're loving how this works, we can jump over to the edit page, do a quick little render, and you'll get much better playback. So let's do that. Let's go to the edit page. Uh, Shift 4 gets you there. I like to use the shortcut F4. You can also click down here, use F4. And to do a render in place, what I like to do to maintain versions is I'll hold Option and Shift on the keyboard, drag it up, and then I can right click, and you can say render in place, and then it's gonna bake in all those effects based on where you tell it you gotta, you know, put it in a folder. It actually makes a quick time file for you. And once this is done, we can go to the beginning and take a look at what we made. Okay, we've changed our, we've got render seven here. This is the seventh version as I was playing with the tutorials. Let's go to the beginning frame with home. We can hit P to go full screen and hit spacebar to start playing back. Sometimes when you have two actors on screen, they don't always have their best performance in the same take. Or maybe they didn't even exist in the same take. So today, I'm going to show you how to combine two shaky handheld shots that don't even use a green screen by using an invisible split screen trick using Fusion and DaVinci Resolve. What do you think? Pretty invisible. Pretty cool, right? The other thing I was going to say, you don't want to put anything in between these trackers and this merge. Don't put color correctors, any of that stuff in between there because that breaks the concatenation of flow. So the biggest takeaway I want you to get with these trackers is that operation match move background only is to stabilize an image. And then you just reverse that to add the shakiness back in. So on this one that happens after they're compositive, we have operation foreground only. 
And also on that tracker, that merge is set to foreground to add that shake back into the camera. You need to be sending two outputs for merge. One is going to the foreground, one's going to the background. So yellow background, green foreground, and you should be set. One cool thing about Fusion is that it only computes the changes one time when you do the stabilization and then reverse stabilization, even after moving pixels around on the frame. This single computation helps to retain all of your detail and quality. It's one concatenation. That's the word of the day. And it's stuff like this that makes me super excited to do Hollywood level tricks cutting here in my house in a converted basement bedroom. Hey, my name is Chadwick. This channel is called Creative Video Tips and it's here for you. I'm here for you. Let me know what you want to learn. I've got a couple of decades of pro editing experience, but I love teaching DaVinci Resolve. So if you stuck around till now, thank you. Share this video with your friends and maybe show them why they should edit with Resolve. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.